Well, recently I did a review on the unit of the SDS 100. I call it the best scanner money can buy, bar none. And for the most part, there are cheaper scanners, but if it's simulcast you want, it's a great scanner to use. One thing I touched on, but didn't really go into detail was the GPS functionality. And I have to say the GPS functionality on the unit in SDS 100 is an amazing tool. And to put it to the test, I'm out on my chase station. I take a week long chasing trip every single year. I travel across the plains of the country. And what we're gonna do is use a GPS in SDS 100 and see how well it works. So to start things off, I'm gonna type in a zip code one that a lot of people are very well aware of, and it's 90210. That's of course California. And so it's gonna load in all of the frequencies and things uh, inside that zip code onto the scanner. And then what I'm gonna do is plug in the GPS, and theoretically, when you have the full database checked on in terms of the scan selection, it should then reload that full database into the area of Iowa, where I'm currently at, Western Iowa. One thing that will significantly help you is having a better antenna. So I use the connector that comes with the scanner. That's the SMA to BNC connector. I use that to then use a uh, BNC antenna, which I have on the outside of my car. That will help your range for sure. And particularly when you're dealing with uh, non-digital uh, frequencies, more known as the conventional frequencies. Uh, that will help your range for sure. The digital frequencies, you really don't need that external antenna, from my experience, much, uh, because usually those towers are much closer together anyway. We have 90210. You can see it's scrolling through Los Angeles and all of that. So what I'm going to do now is take the GPS book, which I have currently right here. I'm going to plug it into the scanner. And as I do that, it's going to sense the GPS. It's going to process the new information, and then it's gonna pull in the new data from the database. So it's gonna load all the frequencies close to me, which may include some Nebraska frequencies, Western Iowa frequencies. And for me, I generally find that 20 to 25 mile range uh, to be a pretty good one to choose for the scanner. I think that's a really good selection for that. It's gonna load the new database. And one thing to note too, is as you're driving along, it's gonna keep pulling and fetching those new frequencies as you drive. So every once in a while, it'll have to load from the database and it'll take some time. So we got the Iowa uh, thing scanned here. And so theoretically, we should start getting some scanner traffic from Iowa. But already you can tell that it's loading things from this area. We're en route to Mercy and 215 Pizza. So that is the county that I'm currently in, that's the EMS responding to a crash that I heard just off to my west. I knew I'd get some scanner traffic, which is why I'm doing it right now. Um, but you can see I pulled that in and I didn't have to do anything. And of course, you want to make sure that the service types that you want are all on. So in my case, uh, you know, fire talk, EMS talk, all the uh, dispatch channels. Did you want all of those turned on um, that, of course, you're listening to to make sure. But you also want to turn off the extra things that you don't want, such as media, military, that kind of things that I personally don't care about. So anyway, I hope you found this interesting. It works incredibly well. And as I drove across the states, this is my last day, by the way, as I drove across the states, Kansas, Texas, I put it to the test. And I will tell you that everywhere I went, I was picking up frequencies, no issue. It worked incredibly well. And also came in handy while chasing because I was getting some storm reports coming in uh, from spotters, the fire department spotters, uh, police department were passing along reports. And that was all incredibly useful for me as a chaser to know what's going on, maybe someplace that I am not. Uh, yeah. uh, just reports here, I made it up to Canada 22 and I started running the hill there, so I didn't get any further than that. Thank you, thank you. I had a report from a citizen four miles north of Kendall. Extreme hail. She advised it's about golf ball size. I believe she has some broken windows in her residence. Just information. I got an engine here to that airport and wire it down. Box 109 at 1610 Holiday Street at 7th Hall Police Department. Box 6th Street at 7th Street. We have a service pole down in the backyard behind his address. We're going to do emergency response. Have you got word that they just put out a tornado warning for this storm, too? Yes, yes, we're about to 1013, 1059. All you have to make sure to do is that you 
at least semi-routinely update the full database on your scanner. First of all, take your scanner, plug in that USB cable. A prompt will come up on the scanner asking what you want to do with it. And what you want to do is use it as a mass storage device. You'll click on E there. It'll then start writing to the SD card there. And then boom, you are good to go. It'll say USB mass storage on the screen. And that's how you know things are good. What you're now going to want to do is go ahead and download the Sentinel software if you haven't done so already. Uh, you can get it online, you didn't support, um, easy to find on there. So now that we have the software downloaded and installed, we're going to fire it up. And the first thing you want to do is make sure that you update the master database. Very simple to do. Update, update master database. It's going to download the very latest version. It updates every week, I believe on Mondays. There we go. And then what we're going to want to do is write it to the scanner. So we're going to want to write to scanner, click on the unit device. That's what we just connected with the USB cable. You want to force write full database. That'll rewrite over uh, what's already on the scanner and then click OK. Uh, the favorites list option I unchecked because I already have favorites list. It's the same as what's already on my computer. I just don't want to mess with that right now. Once you have the full database on the scanner, of course, you need to plug in your GPS. And unfortunately, it doesn't have GPS built in, but thankfully the GPS for the device isn't that expensive. What you need are two parts. You need the GPS puck itself, looks something like that. And you're also gonna need this other cable that I also have linked below. It's basically a USB cable that you plug into some type of power source. It'll have the USB end, which plugs into the scanner itself. And then it has this little serial type adapter thing. It looks more like an S port. Anyway, uh, this will actually go into the GPS puck. And then once you have all of that connected, uh, it should immediately start working. And one thing I do want to point out is that having it plugged into the USB port, it can both power the unit in scanner as well as charge it which is kind of nice if you're traveling around a lot and you need some time to recharge that battery if say for example you unplugged it momentarily uh, you can do that which is something i didn't know right away but you can turn on that charge while it's on thing Thanks for watching, everybody. If you haven't already, check out my full review for the Unit and SDS 100. If you like this content, feel free to check out more. Thanks for watching. We'll see you again next time. How we doing? We're done. I think we're good. <laughs> yeah, thanks.